I am Dr. Sabin, Professor of Pathology in Chitawan Medical College, Bharatpur, Nepal. Welcome to study the topic antigen presentation and activation of CD4 positive and CD8 positive T lymphocytes. Uh, this is basics of immunity part one. If you watch this video till the end, the concepts of antigen presentation and effector cell formation will be as clear as pure water. When an antigen enters the body, the antigen is presented to CD4 positive T lymphocytes or CD8 positive T lymphocytes. Subsequently, many types of effector immune cells are formed and immune response is mounted against the antigen. Several types of molecules are involved during antigen presentation and during the synthesis of effector cells. The molecular details of antigen presentation and the formation of effector cells uh, looks very complex, uh, but I am here to make it simple. To mount an immune response against an antigen, the antigen should be presented to T lymphocytes by an antigen presenting cell APC because T lymphocytes uh, do not recognize free antigen. In this illustration, you can see a free antigen in front of a T lymphocyte, but there will be no immune response because T lymphocyte does not react to free antigen. But when the antigen is presented by antigen presenting cell uh, to T lymphocyte, there will be immune response. To understand immune response against an antigen, we should have some knowledge uh, about antigen presenting cells and T lymphocytes. So let's start with antigen presenting cells. Dendritic cells, macrophages, and B lymphocytes are antigen presenting cells. They can present antigen to the T lymphocytes. Among these three, dendritic cells are the most efficient antigen presenting cells. They are present in all epithelia and spleen and lungs. They are called sentinel cells. They are called sentinel cells because uh, as the antigen enters the body, uh, these cells capture the antigen, phagocytose the antigen, uh, then these cells migrate to lymph nodes and spleen, and in those secondary lymphoid organs, uh, they present the antigen to T lymphocytes. Uh, antigen presenting cells have uh, both MHC1 and MHC2. MHC stands for major histocompatibility, sorry, major histocompatibility complex uh, MHC. So uh, antigen presenting cells have both MHC1 and MHC2. But all the other cells in our body have only MHC1. After antigen presentation, T lymphocytes are activated and they are converted into effector cells. Now we should have more knowledge about T lymphocytes, like where are T lymphocytes uh, produced, how these cells are activated, and what are the molecular details of uh, antigen presentation and T lymphocyte activation. In the bone marrow, lymphoid stem cells give rise to lymphoid precursor cells Lymphoid precursor cells are also known as lymphoid progenitor cells. Lymphoid precursor cells develop into immature T lymphocytes. Immature T lymphocytes from bone marrow migrate to thymus. In the thymus, these immature T cells undergo antigen independent maturation and they are converted into naive T lymphocytes. These cells are also known as TH not cells, and they are of two types, CD4 positive and CD8 positive. Uh, these naive T lymphocytes are called so because they are not exposed to antigen as yet. Naive T lymphocytes 
uh, enter peripheral blood and lymphoid organs. Uh, these cells uh, circulate through peripheral blood and secondary lymphoid organs every 12 to 24 hours. From blood, they reach secondary lymphoid organs like lymph nodes and spleen. In these secondary lymphoid organs, T lymphocytes scan antigen presenting cells for the presence of any antigen. And this process is called immune surveillance. If antigen is present, the antigen presenting cells present that antigen to T lymphocytes. After antigen presentation, T lymphocytes are activated and they are converted into effector cells. Immune response is mounted uh, against that antigen uh, by the effector cells and the molecules which are synthesized by effector cells. This slide shows the pictorial flow diagram of whatever I have discussed about T lymphocytes in the earlier slides. Lymphoid stem cells and precursor cells are found in the bone marrow. Precursor cells are converted into immature T lymphocytes. Immature T lymphocytes migrate to thymus. In the thymus, uh, the immature T lymphocytes are converted into naive T lymphocytes. Then naive T lymphocytes enter peripheral circulation of blood. These naive cells circulate between peripheral blood and secondary lymphoid organs every 12 to 24 hours. Uh, in these lymphoid organs, these naive T lymphocytes scan every antigen presenting cells for the presence of antigen. If antigen is present, then that antigen is presented to T lymphocytes. After antigen presentation, T lymphocytes are activated and they are converted into effector cells. Uh, immune response is mounted against the antigen uh, with the help of effector cells and the molecules that are synthesized by the effector cells. This is another flow diagram of the same knowledge, same information about the T lymphocytes. In this slide, I am going to show you the overview of antigen presentation to T lymphocytes and effector cell formation. After antigen presentation to seropositive positive T lymphocytes, these cells differentiate either into seropositive positive type 1 helper T lymphocytes or seropositive positive type 2 helper T lymphocytes. Type 1 helper T lymphocytes activate macrophages and B lymphocytes. B lymphocytes are converted into plasma cells. The plasma cells synthesize antibodies IgG and IgM. Type 2 helper T lymphocytes activate B lymphocytes. Such B lymphocytes are converted into plasma cells and these plasma cells synthesize IgE and IgA antibodies. After antigen presentation to CD8 positive T lymphocytes, these cells are converted into cytotoxic T lymphocytes. Cytotoxic T lymphocytes can directly kill the target cells. For antigen presentation to CD8 positive T lymphocytes, antigen presenting cells must get help from CD4 positive T lymphocytes. This flow diagram gives the overview of molecular details in every step of antigen presentation and effector cell formation. And this diagram looks quite complex, but in the subsequent slides, I am going to present each uh, step of antigen presentation and each step of effector cell formation in a simplified way. Let's study the molecular details of CD8 positive T lymphocytes activation and effector cell formation. For the activation of uh, CD8 positive T lymphocytes, three signals are required. Antigen presentation serves as the first signal. In antigen presenting cells, phagocytose, virus infected cells, or tumor cells, and display or fragment of the antigen 
in association with MSC class 1 molecule. The complex of antigen plus MSC class 1 molecule binds to T cell receptor present on the cell membrane of CD8 positive T lymphocyte. This is antigen presenting cell APC. APC displays a fragment of the antigen in association with MSC1 molecule. And this complex is presented to CD8 positive T lymphocyte. Antigen presentation means the complex of MSC1 molecule and antigen binds with the T cell receptor PCR on the surface of the CD8 positive T lymphocyte. This is the first signal in the process of CD8 positive T lymphocyte activation. After the activation, CD8 positive T lymphocytes are known as cytotoxic lymphocytes. The second signal is provided by co-stimulation. Binding of CD8 molecule on the surface of the APC with the CD28 co-stimulated molecule on the surface of the CD8 positive T lymphocyte is called co-stimulation. Signal 1 and signal 2 stimulate CD8 positive T lymphocytes and antigen presenting cells to synthesize the cytokine interleukin 2. Interleukin 2 stimulates CD8 positive T lymphocytes to divide rapidly. As a result, there is a significant clonal expansion of CD8 positive T lymphocytes. The third signal of uh, CD8 positive T lymphocyte activation is provided by cytokines interleukin 12 or type 1 interferons. Uh, and these cytokines are synthesized by CD8 positive T lymphocytes and their antigen presenting cells. After the third signal, the activated CD8 positive T lymphocytes gain the complete cytolytic effector function. And this process is called T cell polarization or effector T cell differentiation. This diagram shows all the three signals of uh, CD8 positive T lymphocyte activation. The binding of antigen plus MSC1 complex with T cell receptor is the first signal. The binding of CD80 molecule with CD28 molecule is the second signal. And the effect of interleukin 12 or type 1 interferons on CD8 positive T lymphocytes is the third signal. Uh, to activate CD8 positive T lymphocytes, antigen presenting cells must receive help from CD4 positive T lymphocytes also. CD40 ligand of CD4 positive T cell binds with the CD40 molecule that is present on the surface of the antigen presenting cell. So without this help from CD4 positive T lymphocyte, complete uh, antigen presentation, activation of CD8 positive T lymphocytes, and effector cell formation cannot occur. So CD8 positive T lymphocytes are dependent upon CD4 positive T lymphocytes to mount an immune response to an antigen. Now, I would like to ask you to revise the knowledge that we have gained so far by drawing these three cells and the related molecules uh, so that your learning uh, becomes clear and it lasts longer. CD4 positive T lymphocytes are the other important cells to which antigens are presented by antigen presenting cells. As in the case of CD8 positive T lymphocytes, three signals are required to activate the naive CD4 positive T cells. The first and the second signal are the same as in the case of CD8 positive T lymphocytes with one exception. The exception is that 
uh, to present antigen to seropositivity lymphocytes, the antigen must bind with MSC class 2 molecule. In case of CD8 positivity lymphocytes, the antigen binds with MSC class 1 molecule. But here, to present antigen to seropositive T lymphocytes, you remember, you have to remember that it is MSC2 molecule, not MSC1. And the second signal is the same CD8, CD80 molecule binds with the CD28 molecule on the surface of the CD4 positive T lymphocyte. Signal 1 and signal 2 stimulate T lymphocytes and antigen presenting cells to synthesize interleukin 2. Interleukin 2 is a T cell growth factor. It induces rapid cell division of uh, CD4 positive T lymphocytes. So there is clonal expansion of CD4 positive T lymphocytes after signal 1 and signal 2. During the activation of CD4 positive T lymphocytes, cytokines synthesized by antigen presenting cell provides the third signal. Uh, if APC produces interleukin 12, then the CD4 positive T lymphocytes will be induced to become type 1 helper cells. If the cytokine produced by APC is interleukin 4, then the CD4 positive T lymphocytes will be induced to become type 2 helper cells. And this process is called T cell polarization or effector T cell differentiation. This animated illustration shows all the three signals during the process of CD4 positive T lymphocyte activation and effector cell formation. Antigen presentation is the first signal. A binding of co stimulated molecule CD80 on the surface of APC with another co stimulated molecule CD28 on the surface of CD4 positive T lymphocyte is the second signal. The third signal is provided by the cytokines secreted by APC. If the cytokine that is produced by APC is interleukin 4, then CD4 positive T lymphocytes will be induced to differentiate towards type 2 helper cells. If the APC produces interleukin 12, then CD4 positive T lymphocytes will be induced to become type 1 helper T lymphocytes. And this process is called T cell polarization or effector T cell differentiation. This table compares the three signals that are required for the activation and effector cell formation in relation to CD4 positive T lymphocytes and CD8 positive T lymphocytes. Thank you for watching the video. Please uh, subscribe, like, and give me feedback. See you again in Basics of Immunity Part 2. In the part two, I will describe molecular mechanisms of functions of effector cells. Thank you. Goodbye. Happy studying.